Hi everybody, Jo here. Welcome to another little catch up. So time to just go and make yourself a brew. We know we like a brew and a catch up, don't we? Now today, um, I'm going to do a bit of a play with brush oil sprinklets. Now I've had quite a few messages um, of various ladies ask me if I can just go through how I use them. So this is the sprinklets. They come in a box like this. Um, or you can buy them singly. Lavinia do sell them singly. Now, in the box, we have six little pots. If, like I say, if you buy the box. And we've got, um, let's have a look, an iridescent gold, an iridescent violet, iridescent flash. And then these are lovely. A copper, a gold and a pearl. Now, there are various ways of using these. And as I say, um, quite a few ladies have asked me to just go through how I use them. So like I say, this isn't a standard um, tutorial. This is just how I use them. I always like to say that in case somebody comes in and says they do something different. As you know, I just teach the way I, I, I use things. So um, I hope it helps. But obviously, if you've got any other ideas, by all means, um, pop it in, in the comments. The main thing to work out with these is like with the brush oil so these are made these are called brush oil sprinklets so they go with brush oil powders now these are brush oil powders if you've got them and if you remember these are a pigment powder they're highly pigmented and we recommend with these that you don't take the lid off you pop a pin in the top and you actually take the color out this way the pigment powder so it saves spilling it now it goes for the same in general with the sprinklets and I've got various ways of using these which I'll go through and you'll see why I've got the pin in the top of that sprinklet. Now um, like I say I've got three sort of things to show you and the first is really just to go through if you remember your brush holes one of the ways to use brush holes is to get a piece of card just put some powder on, as I say, with the pin in the top. And I'm a bit sad, I like to have the pin the same colour, so this is olive green, so it's got a green pin. But again, that is just me. Spritz it with water, and obviously you get all this lovely reaction here. Now, the sprinklets are designed that, again, you can do the same thing. So if I sprinkle this on top of my brush hole, what happens is the water that's there will actually, I can add a little bit more, the sprinkle it will then, the water acts as the glue for it. So you can use it to add to your backgrounds. And like I say, so that's why with this one, I have the pin in the lid, because obviously it's not like embossing powder. Any that's left, you can't tip it off and put it back in here. So that's just one way. So you can add, and what happens is, if I can bring it a bit closer, I don't know if you can catch that as it dries look you will get that iridescent sprinkle sort of sparkle and shine but do be aware it's not as easy stamping on this once that's on so I mean if you're going to put a die cut or a topper you know that sort of thing but certainly you can add it into your backgrounds so that's one way and that just explains a bit why obviously brush oil have made the sprinkle it's to go along with the um the brush oil powders but obviously being crafters let's put that to one side it's a bit wet being crafters we have other ways of using them too so what i'll do is a very quick what i want to show you is when i was having a play is that dry this is one way and it's almost using it a little bit like your pearlescent powders, your mica minerals. So it's the same sort of thing. So as I say, this is another way and especially with the copper and the gold, they work really well for this. And for this, it's just, and I'll just very simply show you. I mean, I'm sure you've worked it out yourself. Um, but just to give you the heads up, let me get my stamping mat. And this one is just that simple thing of your Versa mark. So it's your sticky ink pad. Oh, my stamp stuck on my block. 
and I've just gone for any random stamp to be honest it's uh, again Christmas cards it's what's on my desk so I don't know about you but I mean I say this every time don't on my desk really there is no room <laughs> so stamp that and again I'll go for the gold this time because I've shown you the copper so this one I would just take the lid off dip my paintbrush in and that'll be more than enough so pop the lid straight back on try and get into that habit of always putting your lid straight back on because you don't want to spill it and again if I just gently paint that round obviously it's going to stick where the sticky ink the Versamark ink is And again, I'm just going to brush this over my bin. I promise I'm not brushing it on the floor. And then what you would do is lightly, probably with, with soft tissue, I would let it, let it rest. But when you lightly buff it, again, I just want to give you the idea. Look, how pretty is that? So that's one way of using them, as I say, especially the gold and the copper. If I bring those both in, look, the gold and the copper work really well for this. <coughs> oh, sorry, excuse me. So um, just let me grab a drink of water. I think it's the powder is obviously ingesting it. <laughs> sorry. Right, so, as I say, now if you wanted to highlight, this would be lovely. I know it's a bit late now, but for your Christmas cards, just to add some highlight, maybe stamp a couple um, in, say, brown, and then stamp a couple and add your gold or your copper. That would look beautiful. So that's that way. And what I'm, then I thought I'd do is a, a quick demo with this one for you. Really, so we can have a bit of time crafting together. And I want to show you, see this one, how we've got the sparkle? This is adding it at the end with the hole. And this is where we're going to use the water to almost adhere it. So I find it's best if you stamp in your permanent ink. Because if you think about it, if I stamp in a dye-based ink and then I spritz my water, obviously it will activate the dye-based ink and it could run. So, and the other good thing with this is I get another topper made, don't I, for those last minute Christmas cards. So I'm just going to take here the Shady Lady Ink, as you know, it's one of my favourites. And I'm just going to quickly stamp up a wreath, just because it's a nice, quick and easy one to show you. Now I've got a 14 centimetre piece of stamping card here because I know that's going to go nice on a six by six card blank. And I'm just going to start off with this nice holly stamp. It's not the pound one, it's I think it's a sort of a four pound one this, it's nice, it's the next size up. And I'm just gonna do first generation and then come back in the middle with my second generation. And I'm just gonna very quickly stamp up just to give you the idea. I'm sure most of you have seen this before, but if any of you haven't, and excuse my head if it comes in short, this is great. I've done this for a lot of my cards because it's great for batch card making. So again, first generation. And then in the gap with the second. And then if I was batch card making, what I would do now is ink up the first generation and put that on my next card and start off my next one and then come in with the second there so there we go a nice quick and easy little wreath to show you so I'm just going to add a few little berries to this now on my original I've coloured these berries in but I won't because you don't want to watch me colouring do you so this little berry stamp that I'm using is off one of the, um, I think is it the, the berry wreath stamp or the floral wreath. Um, absolutely beautiful and so useful. So again, I'm not particularly overthinking where I'm putting them. Just looking where the placement 
if we need a bit I think we need one there and remember always turn your work I think just maybe one there and turn it back one over there do you know what we'll leave that no pizzas so basically stamp that up I'm going to put a nice bow here maybe a sentiment maybe not but because I've used permanent ink let me just add a few little white dots add those white highlights now, as I say, it's a permanent ink, so I'm happy spritzing this with water and it's the water that's going to make my um, sprinkle it stick and make it all lovely and shiny. So if you're not keen on adding a lot of glitter, it's almost like adult glitter. So let's go for the iridescent gold. I think the gold would look good. Now, a little tip. On my original, I coloured these berries. But again, I didn't use my watercolour pencils because, again, I don't want the water to react with them. So I just went for my Spectrum Noir, my normal colouring pencils. Now, again, what I would do here is add, and especially around the wreath, like a salt and pepper shaker. Just salt and pepper shake that. Pin back in. And just going to hold it over here, give it a nice spritz. Oh, look, I've got a little bit of brush I landed on there. And like I say, it is the water that will then adhere that lovely sprinkle it to my card. So when it dries, it'll have that lovely iridescent sprinkle. So we've had it with the Versamark ink pad that's used to it stick it. And then now we've got the water. And like I say, it just gives that nice finish. So here's the one that's finished where you can see if I just twist it a little. So it's really nice for Christmas cards if you just want that nice bit of glitter. Now you can do this on canvases, but I would recommend maybe sealing it down with a sealant. I must admit, myself for Christmas cards and for cards, I don't seal it. But if it was something like a canvas or a piece of MDF, I would seal it with possibly a spray sealant or a liquid sealant. I tend to use a spray one. I've got to be honest, um, Crafters Companion do quite a few and I have their um, spray and shine, something like that. That's what I would use. Now, the other little thing I want to show you is I made this little tag yesterday and you can paint with it. So I thought I'd show you that as well. Again, it's just a fun little technique to do. So what I'm going to do is again, it's me getting some Christmas tags done. I love putting tags on um, little gifts and things. So how are we all doing anyway? Have you all got everything done ready for, for the big day? Have you got all your cards made and sent? I'm just on my last few. Now I'm going to use Rustic Wilderness and it's just the Distress Oxide and a smoothie and I'm just going to quickly add some of the green around the edge of my tag. I do love this colour, I must admit. I think especially for Christmas it's so rich and quite vintage looking. Now I always just add a little bit on the back because I'm going to get a bit of ink on the back, I've got to be honest. So if I add it round the edge and then I've still got room to write my little verse or my little greeting. And I don't worry, normally as you know I would put a piece of copy paper with my fingers so I don't get finger marks. But for this I'm quite happy because what I'm going to do is just add with my fan brush some sprinkles of water round the edge just before I clean up just to add a bit of interest into the background and you'll see it starting to fold bleach pretty quickly. So I'll we'll just wipe this up. So if you've got these sprinklets, it's the sort of thing you probably bought, even just one pot and then you picked it up and you think, what do I do with it? You know, what's quite nice is if you get yourself a little notebook and maybe over, you know, I don't know, I mean, some places, I know Northern Ireland, I think are going back into lockdown for six weeks from Boxing Day. So maybe you're in somewhere where you've gone back into lockdown or maybe you've got some more time. Why don't you get yourself a little notebook and make notes on things like you sprinkle it? Make yourself a little journal. 
and then maybe you could do some stamping you know you could stamp one of your stamps with your versa mark and do like I did paint it on so it gives you a visual reminder of how to do it as well spritz you know put some of your brush on and add it to the background and then make a note of you can do that I just think it's a lovely way now look at this it's only taken while I was uh, rabbiting on look a couple of seconds and it started faux bleaching and look at that we've got that lovely vintage look around the edge and again it just takes that look at that such a pretty tag in fact I think we've even got a little bit of sprinkle it off the off the top look so pretty so I'm just going to quickly we're going to stamp on that so I'll just quickly put the heat tool over it just to make sure it's dry from the stamping otherwise your stamping won't come out as perfect as you want and always dry it from the back that'll be fine I'm going to go for this lovely stamp because I thought this was a perfect one to show you how we can paint with them I'm just going to use black and let's just put it there again a nice press it, again <coughs> sorry excuse me do you know my naughty throat my throat had got so much better and the last couple of days it just seems to have taken a bit of a turn for the worse i think that happens though doesn't it when you've had a bug or a virus or i think sometimes you're on the mend and then if you're not careful you do a bit too much and it can sneak back but don't worry it won't keep me quiet so look at that i think that's beautiful and again, I'm just going to use this little berry. It comes with this set. And I'm going to come in with some Chianti. And I'm just going to add, do you know what? Let's add a few of the little pound um, holly leaves first. Like I say, it's a great way of being able to show you the sprinklets. But also, it's a great way of me getting a couple of my Christmas tags made. Don't want to overcook this with the holly. Now, I know we normally go on even numbers, but I think four actually looks nice on that because I'm going to come in with a few of these. And I'm just going to put them... I don't want to go over the top of... You see the open ones? That's where I'm going to add my, um, my sprinkle. I'm going to paint it on. So I almost want to avoid those areas. That's nice. Do we put... No, I think we'll leave when we get the sprinkle it on. So let's put those to one side. Now, do we go for gold or copper? So on my original, I went for gold. So maybe this one, should we go for copper? No, let's go for gold again. Go for gold. So my suggestion is a little bit of water on my mat. Now you could do this in a pot if you wanted. You know, mix in a little paint pot. And all I'm going to do is take my paintbrush and then I tell you what I don't want to add water to it do I so let me just get I'm bound to have one of these fantastic little coffee stirrers look these come in for so many so many good uses and let's just take a little bit of the powder we don't need much and to be honest you don't want to take much because then it'll last a lot longer won't it remember lid straight back on we don't want to knock it over and then with your paintbrush let's take a bit now the other thing that you can do is especially with sort of the pearly one you know I do a lot of painting with my distress oxides and my distress inks put them on the mat if you want it to be a shiny color you can add some of the sprinkle it to your distress ink as you're painting with it so that's another lovely thing you can do now this look just get the right consistency and let's just add, I'm going to paint these little berries as well. So this is perfect to show you this. So you can use it, as I say, as a paint. So we can spritz it on, spray it on as our glitter. Or we can paint it. That's so pretty. Right, we'll just add another couple here. quite relaxing to do this really 
So I'm hoping this helps you. I'm hoping if you've got the sprinklets and you've forgotten, I'm just giving you a few ideas of what to do. Now you're all shouting at me, aren't you, that I've missed those there. And I've missed that one there. Are there any others I've missed? Now, again, me being me, where's my white, my white pen? Let's just add, because we want to do this properly. Because like I say, this is another tag for me, for another gift. I had a bit, few white highlights there. Now, this for me is just a little bit bare, a little bit open. So this is where I would add a bit more water. We want this more watery for this and we'll add some little splats, look. So get it quite watery and then take your brush gently. Let's add, we want some there. Now I'm going to turn mine round. I just want a few. We don't want to overcook it. So I would recommend use your hand to tap your brush. Don't go for anything too heavy like um, you can control it better if you use your finger rather than, um, I've seen people use rulers and really heavy obstacles. Just for this, where you want it a bit more gentle, I'd tend to just go for your finger, your hand. You'll probably get it nice and light. There we go. I've probably got more than on the original look, but I'm still happy with that. Now, obviously, I've got plenty here. What I would normally do is just paint something else. Just go ahead. But um, just for our little to tidy up so I can go through it again with you, I'm just going to clean that up. So if we just recap and bring the three in, that's a bit wet, so I'm going to put that to one side. So... Just a little recap while you're finishing your brew and I hope you've got a nice biscuit or a mince pie or some, um, I never know how to pronounce it, Stollen. I think Stollen, the lovely sort of marzipan one, I've got to be honest, I love that. So I hope you've got a bit of Christmas cake, is it too early for Christmas cake? What do you think? Mm, do let me know what, you, what you're munching on while I'm rabbiting away. So we've got it used as a background with our brush oil powders. And we can also use, I mean, I just did this on black card to show you because I think we often forget about black card. So we've used it with our Versamark, our sticky ink pad. And then we've used it just as a general background at the end of a piece of work. But do remember, if you've used Distress Ink or any dye-based ink, when you spritz with water, your ink may just move a little. And then lastly... We've added water to it and we've painted. So that's a few uses for your lovely sprinklets. So I'll bring a couple of those in shot just to remind you. Let's get the one of the iridescent ones just to remind you what I've used and how I've used them. So I'm going to go and finish off those Christmas cards now. I'm going to say thank, us all, thank you, as always, for watching and for your lovely comments. I really do appreciate them. And for your emails. I appreciate those too. And if anybody else wants to join in with the online workshops over the festive time, if you feel you've got some time at home and you want to join an online workshop, as I say, they're only £6 or at least an hour, and you can watch them and join in as many times as you want, um, just drop me a, my emails on just drop me a little email and i'll give you the titles of the workshops we've got seven so far and i'm hoping to get another couple done soon so um you're welcome to join in i've had lovely feedback from the ladies who have so far and a couple of gentlemen so i'm really enjoying this little journey we're having together take care everybody enjoy the rest of your day and oh it's nearly weekend have a lovely weekend last one before the big day so Make sure you get some rest. Maybe have a nice coffee, feet up and just sit, just relax. Just remember to breathe and just enjoy the whole season. So I'm going to go and say much love and hugs, everybody. Take care. Bye for now.